Hello, you're very welcome to Jerry's DIY. If it's your first time here and you'd like to learn how to make stoves, waste oil boilers, and a ton of other DIY projects, you could start now by subscribing and click on the bell notification so you don't miss anything. Okay, here we go. So I've been putting off cleaning this stove for ages. <laughs> I meant to do it ages ago, like, you know, at the start of the heating season, I got busy and I couldn't do it, or didn't do it rather. Um, so anyway, you know, it's getting a bit slow to pull the fumes in and that sort of thing. And if I have a big fire on, um, it, it's a lot slower than it used to be. So what's wrong here now is the chimney is stuffed. So I burned the stove hot. It doesn't need as, as much um, cleaning as, you know, wood if you're burning an awful lot of wood or if you're burning wet timber or something like that. But anyway, I burned this one hot because um, it's, it has a lot to do. This is a boiler stove. It heats the water. It also heats the, uh, the domestic heating system. In this case, it's underfloor heating. So this has a, has a boiler built in, uh, which takes or which outputs about 15 kilowatts. And then there's about six kilowatts to the room. You know, it's a fairly big room, this as well. So 21 kilowatts in total. So I don't need to take the stove out in order to clean the chimney. There's a plate at the back and I can get a brush, this brush in fact, um, through it and up the chimney. Now I've got clay liners in the chimney. It's not a stainless steel kind of flexi flu or it's not a stainless steel flue or anything like that. It's eight, eight inches um, clay pipes you know, surrounded by concrete and stuff like that. And it goes up in a, in a concrete chimney. So that's how this one is set up. And a steel pipe goes from the back of the stove um, out and up and connects into the clay liners. And uh, what I want to do is get this inside there and clean them. Uh, and I have a few other things to do with the stove. So here we go. So this is an enamel stove. You know, it's glass kind of coated, if you like, uh, for effect. You know, it, it's a nice finish. You can wipe it. It doesn't get dusty and stuff like that. But um, this top plate needs to come off and it just lifts straight up. Heavy, cast iron, but here we go. It's cast iron and it's got a shiny, if you can see it, shiny glass top. But I have to be careful with it because um, it chips very easy. So I have a, a blanket on the floor here. And that's it down safe. You can see it's got some fiberglass rope. Um, and that's just to stop, you know, enamel on enamel, stops it chipping. Now this stove is a big cast iron top plate. It's part of the flueway, it directs the gases around the, the boiler part of the stove. And I need to take that off. It's held on with four bolts. A few years ago, I changed those bolts from cast iron because they were seized. I took them out and I changed them for stainless steel. So this is the first time I've changed them or I've done anything with them since then. And uh, hopefully the plan was that it would be easy to open. We'll see that now in a minute. Right, here we go. So I've changed these out for 12 mil nuts and bolts. And um, this is just a 12 mil socket. And it should be easy enough. There's fiberglass rope under this. So it's not, and the nut is coming out great. Now I'm ready to lift this now. This is sitting on some fiberglass rope, so it'll be easy to lift up, um, but heavy and dirty maybe. Okay. Okay, so as it turns out, so it's not too bad. Nice piece of engineering this. This is solid cast iron. These are well made, these stoves. This is a Stanley Aaron um, 21 kilowatt stove. 15 to the water, six to the room. I'll show you in here in a second. And uh, it's actually a lot cleaner up here than I thought. Now I haven't cleaned the stove out for a couple of years, but as I said, when I run this stove, I run it hot. It's a little, it's sized, maybe one size too small for this house, maybe a couple of sizes too small. I've got 15 kilowatts to the water. Um, to be honest, I could really do it maybe 30 kilowatts. So what I, what I do with this, generally is I'll heat you know a slab a floor area at a time and then work it around the house sometimes maybe uh, two floor areas depending on the um, two zones if you like depending on the, the size of the room you know and how big a fire I've got on the go but anyway this is actually cleaner than I thought mm. so most likely the chimney is the problem now so you can see the fiberglass rope around here and that keeps it on and I change these bolts these nuts and bolts, these were cast iron and I've changed them, retreaded it, the top of this, I retreaded, I, I treaded it with a metric tread, put some bolts on it and then use stainless steel nuts. 
Okay, so if you can see here, this is um, dust and stuff, and this needs to come out. So this is a piece of cast iron barbecue, something or other, <laughs> that I cut a few years ago. There was a plate in there that wasn't doing too well. So um, I modified this one, and uh, it's worked great. Now obviously everything inside the stove is either covered in soot, ash, or whatever. You know, it's dirty and it's dark. So look, there's a cast iron plate in here that lifts off. There you go. This has to go back in. But on the other camera, you can see, you know, maybe here you can see it. There's a, if I can get to it, this thing here. That's the start of the chimney. And what I need to do now is to get that brush in there and up. And we're gonna give that a shot now. So here's the setup of these brushes. These are about one foot in diameter, 12 inches across, and they're very light. And the, the thing is, when they go in, you twist it in a clockwise direction. If you go anti-clockwise, you'll disconnect the, uh, the rods, and then getting it out of the chimney might be a problem. Maybe you'd have to burn it out, I don't know. So everything I do here, that's it, like these, these bristles bend backwards. Now, ready for another rod to go on the end of this, and I'll just twist it up. Just gotta be gentle with it. So this is quite difficult to get started. This is six inch flue at the back of this. And to get the, um, the brush up the flue, obviously I have to um, you know, use a bit of force. Finesse. So it's beginning to win now. Once it gets by the flue, there we go. Now we're into the flue liners. The flue liners are eight inches in diameter and um, easier to get up. So I have to be a bit careful getting the brush back out. So. so I've used two rods so far. I think about eight rods will do this. Again, these screw in clockwise. Everything on this has to keep heading up the chimney in a clockwise direction. Now I do this a bit differently if I didn't have the camera on it. But um, what I'm gonna have to do now is tape off the doorway on this. So look, I've got just an ordinary black plastic bag. And I, literally I've just pushed the rod through it. I don't really need to see what's happening in there now. And um, I'm just gonna tape that off. Now this is a messy process, no matter what way you do it. Um, if you had snow white carpets in your living room and one of these stoves, <laughs> you're gonna have fun. Or tiles on your floor very quickly afterwards. But anyway, look, I'm gonna take this down now. I've only got a couple of rods left to go. So nice and slow. And I've been pushing the rods up and down you know, to dislodge any um, soot, whatever's in there. Okay, so taking these out one at a time. Can't stress this enough, it's important to keep rotating them clockwise, because if not, what happens is they could untread. And then, you know, how do you get it out then? You'd have to burn it out maybe. It also helps kind of sweep the chimney too. So look, I'm on to the next one now. So I'm just gonna undo it with two pipe wrenches. Okay, there we go. These have ferrules on them, look like that. Okay, so that treads into the socket on the other one. Nice and slow with this because there'll be clouds of dust in the room. Rotated it clockwise all the way up and rotated it clockwise all the way down. And that way the, uh, the, you know, the tubes or the rods stay intact. Otherwise they'll unwind, then what do you do then? So I've had very little soot out of the chimney, which is fantastic. It means the stove is burning well. Um, I do burn wood, um, coal sometimes, uh, whatever really, you know, solid fuel, it's a multi-fuel stove and I, you know, I burn multi-fuels in it. Sometimes I burn vegetable oil and sawdust, um, but I burn them hot. You know, I'm not making a ton of smoke and if there's no smoke, smoke is unburned fuel. So um, you want it nice and hot so you're not getting smoke out of your chimney. A bit like the waste oil burners, when I burn them, you know, there aren't clouds of smoke going downwind. Uh, there's no smoke, 
you know maybe a little when i started for a few seconds or a minute half a minute whatever you know and that's only sometimes it depends on atmospheric conditions as well but uh, if i get a good roar on it that's it it's burning clean um right so let's go so that's it that's how you clean a chimney in situ you know connected without taking the whole thing out to clean the chimney or going up on the chimney you know and rotting down and um, to get it cleaned out so this particular stove is okay you know for that a little bit tricky to get it, get it around the you know six inch flue the bend at the back but uh, not impossible if you rotate you know and go all the, it'll go around the bend center itself and then go up into the bigger flue in my case um, if you've just had six inch flue maybe you'd want these smaller these are 12 inches in diameter and I needed that to clean the eight inch flue but if I only had a six inch flue away I chopped these down to about seven inches in diameter you know so that no matter what that the brushes are kind of sprung against the outside wall or the inner wall of your flue and in that way it'll clean it now this is just bog standard fire cement nothing special you know there's various different brands uh, and I'm not brand loyal so it's whatever I get in the suppliers this stuff is black um, I'll show you now there's some fire cement missing from along the side of this you know the seal between the boiler and the casing and um, you know I'm just going to top it up again fill it in and I'll just show you the setup now now there's only a few spots on this that need fire cement um, one of them is along this edge here where you can see my glove along here and I just want to kind of top it up there a little bit is broken out so fire cement looks like this you know it's wet stays in the tub it's kind of mixed cement when it gets a bit of heat it goes hard and I just need a bit in here literally it just seals the casing it leaves everything airtight I'm just literally pushing it in the gap that's it couldn't be easier now to clean the glass the glass is fairly dirty on this one to clean the glass just get a baby wiper a bit of cloth or something and dip it in ash you know so some nice kind of clean ash <laughs> the hood's dirty and uh and go over your glass now if your glass is brand new and you're worried about scratching it uh, it's not overly abrasive you know you want to be really trying but in my case um, the glass is old and when the glass gets old it gets pitted so you know um, and this does a decent job on it so again just a raggedy old baby wipe and some ash but um, the pitting then if you have your fire going fairly hot um, you're going to get pitting in it. And you can hear it, you know, it's kind of, it's more like a um, rubbing compound for a car maybe. And perhaps you could use that on the glass if it was pitted badly. You know, if it's not broken, cracked or anything, you get a bit longer out of it. So there you go, great setup. You can see the flames absolutely belting out there. If I was to open this door now, um, we would get zero smoke out into the room. And you can see I'm just burning shop waste there and getting a ton of heat for free, which is <laughs> really good. The heat from here then, it heats a water jacket and it goes, um, you know, goes into my floor eventually through an underfloor heating system. But a um, fantastic setup, uh, you know, and as well as everything else, I'm actually heating the house for free, which is fantastic. Um, Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for now. Look, if you like the video, please thumbs up, subscribe down here, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks very much for dropping by. Good luck.